Welcome back to Better Than Barrier. As normal, let's check in on the Prediction League and let's hope Future Me doesn't have to cut in with the announcement this time. The top four remain unchanged, Shadow Band 2708 has extended their lead at top. Arkell also closed the gap to Pablo and Stafford Bantam, who were in joint second. Rocket, who was joint fourth with Arkell, falls one place having failed to gain any points. Yuja swaps places with Starbar, they are seventh and eighth. Outside top ten, we have one mover. That's Mighty Bantam, who falls one place to thirteenth. Remember, as always, the entry thread for the next match is in the description. Now let's roll the titles. It's game week 35 in Skybet League 2 and we've travelled to Rodney Prey to take on Newport County. Newport are 13th but are one of the most informed sides in the league while we've hit some inconsistency. Before we look at today's teams, let's check in on the news that happened between episodes. And it's a big one that's going to really impact today's lineup. And here it is, Jamie DeVitt has got the virus. And it's not stay away from the club for 14 days level, it's out for 6 months, which ends his season. While his performance has been a frustration, he is on PayPal's star player. He doesn't change the lineup for the next match as he wouldn't have started, as he's still recovering from match sharpness since his previous injury, but he would have been important in the run-in. Not surprisingly, Blackpool have cancelled his loan, so he leaves the club with immediate effect. If we have a look at his stats, he started 29 matches and came off the bench twice. He scored 6 goals, had 4 assists and got 2 player the match awards. He made 2.32 tackles per match, had 75% pass success rate and made 2.43 dribbles a match. 36% of his shots hit the target and he drew 64 fouls. It's perhaps these fouls why his average rating was only 6.9 as he may have been singled out as a star player and targeted. We then did get some good news. Forest Green played their game in hand at home to mid-table Portville. Portville scored two quick goals, the first on the third minute from Amu and second on the fourth minute from Montano. Portville held on to this 2-0 lead for the rest of the match. Gives us a little more of a breathing room at the top of the table. Anyway, that was also back to today's teams. It says we have no team news, but as we know, we're without Henley. They are missing three players and also have Jamil Matt as a doubt. They favour a 5-2-1-2 with wing backs, and we've struggled at times against this. So I'm going to shake up the formation to try and control the centre of the puck. As you can see, we're going for 4-3-2-1. McCartan drops to the bench and Pritchard comes in as the third central midfielder. So the lineup is McGee in goal, Mella, O'Connor, Powdy and Wood in defence, Reeves, Pritchard and Cook in midfield. Milton is on the wings and Novak up top. And on the bench, it's O'Donnell, Richards, Everton, McCartan, Goldthorpe, Guthrie, Donaldson, and French. Can't have the free kick, but it's around the wall. McGee is scrambling, but he can't get enough whip on it. O'Connor tries to find teammates, but can't intercept it. Drives in space. Goes past Miller. Lays inside Abrahams. Shoots, but it's right at McGee. We've created nothing, so let's tweak. Let's put overlaps on to try and get the fullbacks more involved. We're going to take off passing space to work in the box. We're going to tell him to run at defence. And we're also going to go a bit wider. Go for throw on the left. Throw finds Novak. Novak shot his box. Wood should get to the rebound, but Ingus gets there first. Piers it, but O'Connor intercepts. Nods it to Reeves. Reeves out to Mella. Mella looks to take on the defender. The defender sticks with him. Crosses. Cook is free. Heads it towards goal, but it's over the bar. Newport have done us that half. Nine shots to our three. Fifth, sixth fence possession in their favour. They've completed 77% of the passes. We've only completed 63. We've only won 67% of our tackles and 50% of our headers. Our best player is McGee, but he's only a 6.7. Isma's been woeful and is our worst player. He hasn't completed a single cross that half. On team analysis, we see that while Wood has won back the possession the most, he's also lost it the most. We've struggled to get the ball in their half, and when we have had it in their final third, we've struggled to get shots the way. O'Connor plays it to Pritchard. Pritchard turns to out wide to Cook. Cook is better driving forward, lays it back to Powdy. Powdy looks long for Novak, but it's nowhere near him. Newport can break. Sheehan over top to Waters. He's in. Waters shoots, but Wood gets back and blocks it. The formation change hasn't really worked, so let's go back to the tried and tested one. We need to switch Novak and Pritchard around before taking Pritchard off for McCartan. We will also tell them to run at defence more, and we will set the mentality to positive. Time for free kick on the left, fires it towards goal, but this time he has too much whip. We're running out of time and Ismo struggles, so let's bring on Guthrie. Let's play him as a wide target man. He's been doing well in the reserves, and he's been moaning about wanting a chance. Let's see if he can take it. Green hits it long. Abraham's knocked it down the car. Can't with the first time pass into Walters. Walters has to score, but McGee saves. The build up play by Newport, and then that final ball by Khan to play Waters in was fantastic. He thought Waters had to score. Maybe he could have gone across the keeper with his left, but it's still a brilliant save by the keeper. Mellis Fitness has taken a sudden drop. Even with a minute left, I'm not going to risk leaving him on. French will come on in his place. Barry to O'Connor. O'Connor finds Guthrie on the wing. Guthrie plays it into French. French inside to McCartan. McCartan drifts into the channel, but doesn't have the pace, so shifts it gently. Yes! Totally against the run of play. And not deserved, but Cook surely won it for us here. He was, what, at least 20 yards out. An absolute brilliant strike. As McCarthy gets the ball, it looks like some space is opened up for him. But he lacks either the awareness or the pace to use it. 
He has great vision, however, to see Cook. And Cook, with confidence, hits it with the outside of his boot. And it curves away from the keeper. If we take another look, it's really good interplay between Guthrie, French and McCartan in the build-up. And when McCartan gets on the ball, Cook has found himself in Acus. It's well spotted by McCartan. And the keeper has little chance when Cook strikes this. Using the edge of the boot to see it curl past the keeper's fingers. Cook's movement here is really clever. When the move starts to develop, he is on the halfway line. He finds himself with all this space to himself, which a play of his intelligence is always going to enjoy exploiting. Especially when he knows that Ash Baker is concerned about Mill to making this one here, which will push Baker deeper and give him even more of space. Not to mention, he also has Woods, who can double up down there. So as Guthrie lays the ball off the French, Cook has started his run. He attacks the space of purpose while the defenders are being pushed back. When the defenders check their runs, he holds back and even takes a few steps backwards to maintain the gap. As McCartan crosses the attack space again, gets the ball and with time and space takes a couple of touches and fires it past the keeper. One last chance for Newport to get back into this. Bennett heads it to Dolan. Dolan then to Baker. Baker plays it long. Howdy wins the header. And there goes the final whistle. Didn't deserve to win this, but it's these kind of wins that are making the champions. We were better in the second half. The change information certainly helped. We had eight shots there, 15. Newport had the only clear cut chance and they also had two half chances to our one. We did end up with more possession than them and our passing did improve in the second half. Our best player was Callum Cook, who got 8.3. Our worst player was Ismail, who was on 6.2. He still failed to get a successful cross in that whole second half. Let's have a look at some of the key player stats. As is the norm, Mano made a bunch of mistakes, four of them this time. He was joined by the other four back in Wood. He also made four mistakes. Mano was able to draw four fouls and both travelled a fair distance. Seven miles for Mella, 7.6 miles for Woods. They dealt with a radiant of 6.7 for Mella and 6.8 for Woods. Reeves didn't have his best game, getting only 6.6 and making two mistakes. He did cover 7.5 miles, so at least he was putting in the effort. Pritchard didn't really show up on his return, and he only got 6.4. Was this lack of match sharpness, or was it the role I deployed him in? We'll have to wait and see. Well, Cook got man of the match and got an 8.4 rating. Outside the goal, he didn't really do much. He created no chances, had no key passes and no assists. He did put in a shift and cover 7.7 .7 miles, which was the second highest in the whole team. Ismail was already covered was the worst player in the team on 6.2 he did appear to find the cross was a major issue there but he also made two mistakes Middleton on the other side wasn't much better as he only completed 8% of his crosses he did cover the most ground of any player and did create a chance and had a key pass but he also made two mistakes and got 6.6 .6. Novak while being great in the air in the last match struggled this time winning just 33% maybe playing him up front in his own isn't the best way to use him he also struggled to create chances with only one chance all game he got 6.4 the subs largely didn't have enough time to have an impact although all three were involved in the goal. Carter was the only one on long enough to get a rating and he got 6.8. He had a direct assist for the goal and also made a key pass. He only made three passes in the whole match. So the fact two of those were an assist and a key pass is fairly impressive. He made two mistakes. If we have a look at the rest of the scores and see how it impact the table. Morkham went to Carlo and won 1-0. Carlo remained bottom while Morkham rise one place 19th. Seventh place Chelton took an early lead, put an own goal in the 8th second minute, saw them drop two points. They remain seventh. Crawley and Steam had an eventful match. Gray Cox gave Crawley the lead after three minutes. Then they got a second through Palmer on the 41st minute. In injury time, James Wilden got one back. Just after half time, Van Vels to restore Crawley's two goal lead. Flamey then got a double to bring it back to 3 2. Then in injury time, Doherty and Tony Cliff both scored to see Crawley run out 5 3 winners. Crawley remained fourth to keep their push for automatic promotion going. Steven's playoff push takes a hit as they fall one place to 10th. Crawley ran out four new winners versus Bakersfield. That moves not one place ninth, and they are just three points away from a playoff position. Oldham went to Leighton Orient and won 3 1. That moves Oldham up three places to 15. Exeter got a vital win in their relegation fights. They went 1 0 down against Northampton, but Bowman equalised on the 20th minute, and Martin got the win on the 47th minute. That moves Exeter up two places to 21st. Plymouth and Cambridge, who are two of the informed sides in the league, met and played out a 1 0 draw. Plymouth remained in third, while Cambridge just outside the playoffs in eighth. Sixth place, Colchester went to Salford and won 1 0. Colchester remained sixth, while Salford fall to is second from bottom. Swindon scored in the first minute and held it out for the rest of the match. Swindon remained in fifth. As we wrap up the episode, let's check in on the latest on where the minimum we can finish in the league is. As you can see, that has now risen to 11th. That means we're just three paces shy of achieving title of the series and doing better than Barrier. When we first checked in on this, we needed five wins and a draw. So now with those two wins down, it's just down to three wins and a draw. However, with the other results, we actually don't need three more. We need two wins and two draws. The next match is against Inform Plymouth, who are in third. It would be great to get one of the wins that we need here, but I'd be happy with just getting a draw. Plymouth are without three players, which should help though. 
The match will take place on Sunday 6th of September at 7pm BST. For those taking part in the Prediction League, as normal, the link to the entry thread can be found in the description. Anyway, if you could drop the video a like, that would be much appreciated. It really helps get the videos discovered, and the rise in likes recently has seen a real increase in views. If we can push it to the next level, hopefully we can get even more eyes on the videos. Also, while you're clicking the like, why not drop us a subscribe? We've just reached 25, and it would be great to reach 30. Subscribing is the best way to be informed when the next episode goes up. And with that, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs>